Is China about to build the world's first AI hospital powered by 14 AI doctors? Disney and OpenAI just dropped a massive year-end gift that could change content creation forever. A four-legged AI robot can now climb stairs, cross obstacles, and deliver your food right to your door. And yes, we're also seeing nano-banana-level tools entering AI video editing. This week, AI and robotics updates are absolutely insane. Insane. So without wasting any time, let's start with update number one. Man, China is doing absolutely crazy things in robotics. This time, Mydea Group, the appliance giant behind air conditioners and washing machines, and also the owner of KUKA, has officially unveiled a six-armed robot called Miro Yu. And yes, it literally has six hands. This humanoid-style industrial robot is already being deployed inside Mydea's own washing machine factory in Wuxi, China. And the idea behind six arms is actually very practical. Instead of copying humans with just two arms like Tesla Optimus, Mydea designed it for pure factory efficiency. The robot can hold a heavy washing machine drum with two arms, insert screws with another pair, and manage cables or quality checks with the remaining two all at the same time, meaning no tool switching and massive time savings. It doesn't even walk like a human. It looks more like a spider-humanoid hybrid with a wheeled base, 360-degree rotation, and super stable movement, allowing it to work in tight spaces without turning its entire body. Mydea claims this robot boosts production line efficiency by around 30%, especially when factories switch between different products. That said, reactions are mixed. Chinese media is calling it a breakthrough that can replace three human workers, while some tech critics argue the six arms are hard to coordinate and could slow things down if the AI isn't perfect. Still, when you look at the bigger picture, AI traffic police, robots on army borders, and now six armed factory workers, China is clearly operating on a completely different level in robotics right now. And honestly, it's both mind-blowing and intimidating at the same time. As we head toward the end of 2025, one of the most interesting deals in the AI world has officially gone through. Disney and OpenAI have finalized a massive partnership. Under this deal, OpenAI now has legal permission to train its AI models using Disney's copyrighted characters, which is a huge shift. This means characters from Marvel, Star Wars, and Pixar can now be used legally inside OpenAI-powered tools, opening the door for AI platforms like Sora 2 to eventually generate content involving these iconic characters without copyright issues. Both companies have emphasized that this will be done responsibly, with a focus on user safety and protecting creators' rights. Beyond licensing, Disney is also becoming a major OpenAI customer, using OpenAI's APIs to build new tools and experiences for products like Disney+, Plus, and even deploying ChatGPT internally for Disney employees. On top of that, Disney is making a $1 billion equity investment in OpenAI, along with warrants to purchase more shares in the future, which shows just how serious this partnership is. This is a big deal for creators and AI enthusiasts, because once everything is fully rolled out, we may actually see officially licensed AI-generated Marvel or Star Wars-style content. I'll definitely test this the moment it's enabled, and once Sora allows it, I'll make a full demo video on it. Robots are now getting human-like eyes, and this is not sci-fi. Researchers at Georgia Tech have created a new soft robotic eye called PHYSL, photoresponsive hydrogel soft lens, made completely from a jelly-like material similar to contact lenses. Unlike normal robot cameras that use hard glass lenses, motors, and electricity, this eye has no glass, no wires, and no battery. The crazy part is how it focuses. The lens contains tiny graphene oxide particles that heat up when light hits them. That heat makes the soft hydrogel contract, changing the shape of the lens, exactly like the muscles in the human eye. More light means more squeeze and sharper focus. Less light means it relaxes and resets automatically. 
because it's soft, it's almost unbreakable, works without power, and can focus on insanely small details, even something as tiny as a hair on an ant's leg. This is a huge step towards soft robots that can truly see like humans. The next update is from Apple. And even though Apple hasn't been moving as aggressively in AI as Google or Microsoft, this could be their real starting point. According to the most reliable Apple insider, Mark Gurman, Apple's long-rumored Project J595 is no longer just an experiment and is now heading toward production. Internally, this device is being described as a kind of home pad. Imagine an iPad attached to a sleek, elegant robotic arm sitting on a round base, almost like a futuristic lamp with a floating screen. But this arm isn't just a stand. It is motors that let the screen tilt up and down, rotate 360 degrees, and smoothly move to follow you around the room. This is what makes it a robot. It solves the biggest problem with today's smart displays, which are stuck facing one direction. With Apple intelligence, you'll be able to say something like, hey Siri, look at me, and the device will locate your voice, find your face using its camera, and physically turn the screen toward you. During FaceTime calls, if you walk around to grab a coffee or move across the room, the screen follows you smoothly, making it feel like the person you're talking to is actually watching you. The device is expected to run a new operating system called Home OS, powered by a much smarter Siri 2.0, which rumors say will feel more alive with on-screen animations and personality, closer to a companion than a boring speaker. On top of that, it will act as the command center for your entire smart home, showing security camera feeds, door alerts, and home controls while physically adjusting its screen for the best view. If this launches as expected, it could be Apple's quiet but powerful entry into home robotics and AI assistance. The next update is seriously impressive. The RI VR1, previously known as Swiss Mile, is now one of the world's most advanced delivery robots, and the viral clip you saw of it fighting through snow and ice in Pittsburgh wasn't a stunt. It was a full stress test for the robot's new physical AI brain. Unlike normal delivery robots that are basically coolers on wheels, RIVR1 is a wheeled-legged hybrid. It drives on motorized wheels at high speed on flat ground, up to 15 miles per hour. But the moment it hits stairs, steep hills, or deep snow, it locks its wheels and walks on four robotic legs like a dog. This solves the last 100 yards problem, because it can take a package from a delivery van, climb your porch steps, and drop it right at your door even in harsh winter conditions. The company chose Pittsburgh on purpose. The city has brutal hills, outdoor staircases, and icy roads, making it the ultimate final boss for robot testing. What's crazy is that the robot isn't following fixed rules. It uses reinforcement learning, meaning it taught itself how to balance on ice in simulation millions of times, which is why when you see it slip and recover, it genuinely moves like a living animal. RIVR, backed by Jeff Bezos and the Amazon Innovation Fund, built this robot to carry up to 110 pounds, navigate almost completely on its own, and eventually help automate doorstep deliveries. This is the first robot to combine car-level speed with dog-level agility. And honestly, at this pace, 2026 is shaping up to be a full-blown robotics revolution. This next update is probably the main reason many of you clicked on this video. Is China really building the world's first AI hospital? The answer is yes, but not in the way you think. China isn't building a physical hospital made of bricks and beds. Instead, researchers at Tsinghua University in Beijing have created something called an agent hospital, which exists entirely in a virtual digital world. Think of it like an ultra-advanced medical simulation, almost like The Sims but for doctors. 
Inside this digital hospital, they started with 14 AI doctors and four AI nurses, all powered by large language models similar to ChatGPT. And the patients aren't real humans, but AI-generated virtual patients designed with specific diseases and symptoms. When researchers let the system run, the results were shocking. These AI doctors treated 10,000 patients in just a few days, something that would take a human doctor nearly two years years, and they achieved an accuracy of 93.06% on MedQuay benchmarks based on the U.S. medical licensing exam, meaning they're already as accurate or even better than many junior doctors. The system works like a fully automated medical ecosystem. A virtual patient describes symptoms, an AI nurse assigns them to the right AI specialist, the doctor reviews history, orders virtual tests, makes a diagnosis, and creates a treatment plan. The most impressive and slightly scary part is that the AI doctors learn from each other in real time. If one makes a mistake, all the others instantly analyze it and improve their own decision-making. It might sound impossible today, but this project gives us a very clear glimpse into a future where AI could become your first doctor. And one more really interesting update. YouTube has officially started rolling out Allowed 2.0 for all monetized channels, meaning anyone in the YouTube Partner Program can now use AI auto-dubbing. But here's the crazy part. This isn't like the old robotic YouTube dubbing we all hated. Allowed 2.0 actually clones your own voice into other languages. So imagine this, you upload your video in English, and suddenly, viewers in Brazil hear your voice speaking perfect Portuguese. Viewers in India hear your voice speaking Hindi. Spanish, Indonesian, French, everything sounds like you, not a generic AI robot. This can literally 10x your audience overnight without recording multiple versions, without hiring voice artists, without doing any extra work. It's insane for growth. But, let me be honest, even though it's much better than before, I still personally keep auto-dubbing disabled for now, because the AI sometimes messes up tone, emotion, comedy timing, and even pronunciation. And if your content relies on personality or your natural speaking style, one wrong AI dub can completely break the vibe of the video. So yeah, huge potential, but still not perfect. Now, I want to know your opinion. Should we enable YouTube's auto-dubbing or not? Do you think it's worth the reach or does it ruin authenticity? Drop your thoughts in the comments. I'm genuinely curious what you guys think. Alright, let's do some quick but insane AI tool updates, just in case you missed them. First, GPT Image 1.5 officially dropped this week. And bro, this one is easily Nano Banana's toughest competitor so far. By the way, I already made a 26-minute ultra-detailed comparison between GPT Image 1.5 versus Nano Banana Pro versus Sea Dream 4.5. If you haven't watched that yet, you are literally missing everything. I'll leave the link in the description and the i button. Next, WAN 2.6 is here, basically the upgraded version of WAN 2.5. And yes, this is a direct competitor to Sora 2.0 and VO 3.1. I loved WAN 2.5, but haven't tested 2.6 yet, so you can try it yourself on their official site. It's closed source. Then we have C-Dance 1.5 Pro from ByteDance, officially rolled out. This one looks like a very strong AI video editor model. I haven't fully tested it either, but if you guys want a full comparison between C-Dance 1.5 Pro, Sora 2.0, and VO 3.1, just tell me in the comments and I'll make it. And yes, King also released its new King 01 model, which honestly feels like the nano banana of video editing. You can generate 360-degree character consistency from a single reference image, change clothes, faces, body looks, all by prompt. It's wild. Plus, Luma Labs dropped Ray 3, which is basically the same category. Full video character editing, background control, emotional edits, everything. It's basically Nano Banana, but for video. And this is exactly the type of tool everyone was waiting for. 
And trust me, this is just the beginning of AI video editing. The next 12 months are going to be absolutely ridiculous. Google also released Gemini Flash 3, a lighter, faster version of the Pro model. Same capability as Flash, but cheaper and more efficient to run. Meanwhile, Alibaba launched Quen 3 TTS VD Flash, and this one is honestly crazy. It can clone your voice in 3 seconds and speak it back in 10 languages. English, Chinese, Spanish, French, German, Italian, Japanese, Portuguese, Russian. And according to their own benchmarks, it has 15% lower error rate than 11 Labs and GPT 4.0 audio. They even released a companion model that lets you design voices using text prompts, like make a middle-aged male tone, booming baritone, energetic infomercial style. And in roleplay tasks, it beat GPT 4.0 Mini TTS and Gemini 2.5 Pro. You can test both models right now on Hugging Face. The demo link will be in the description. Quen also dropped a brand new open source image editing model with layer-based editing. Yes, like Photoshop layers, but with AI prompts. It splits any image into multiple editable layers and lets you edit each one independently. Bro, this honestly kills Photoshop. Even Nano Banana doesn't have true layer editing yet, and if it ever does, graphic designers are done. I'm not hating on GDs, but reality is reality. When someone like me with zero design background can already make high-quality thumbnails, imagine what happens when AI gives full layer-level control. That's not future, that's happening now. And one more update. You can now use Opal inside the Gemini app, which is basically a lightweight version of N8N. You can build mini apps and workflows directly inside the AI. I explained this months ago, but now it's fully integrated. There are a lot more new tools, but I'll cover those in my next video, so make sure you subscribe and don't miss out. I'm not here to play around. We're tracking the real AI revolution.